Well, again, it's uh, fast approaching 20 minutes uh, after seven, and it's time for us to uh, head on over to Santon. That's where we find my colleague, Peter Andoro. He's uh, hosting another one of our TNA SABC business briefings. Uh, a very good morning to you, Peter. Tell us more about your discussions today. Are you happy with the, the microphones? Right, so very warm welcome, Ayanda. Thank you very much indeed. And welcome to all of you if you're uh, watching us uh, from not just across Af uh, South Africa, but across the continent. Uh, we're here in Santon, which is just north of Johannesburg. And this is the venue for the latest in the series of New Age business briefings brought to you by the SABC. And today we're talking about African cities, because in just 73 days' time, we're going to have the uh, Afri City Summit, the seventh edition of the summit that will be taking place here in Johannesburg. And uh, quite a number of issues will be on, uh, on the agenda. The theme for the conference is shaping the future of Africa with the people, the contribution of African local authorities towards Agenda 2063. Now, if you don't know what Agenda 2063 is, you want to listen today. We'll talk about it. But this is something that every African should know about, uh, creating the Africa that we want. And uh, what role do local government uh, play in uh, uh, reaching that uh, 2063 agenda. Uh, a few statistics, I think, perhaps that we can put on the table just to kind of help us uh, unpack the importance of this conversation. Uh, by 2050, 2 billion people will be living in Africa, which will make it the most populous region on the planet. Um, and in fact, 1.3 billion of those people will be living in cities. They'll be urban dwellers. And this is, 2050 is just around the corner. Uh, we also have the youngest population uh, in, on the, in, in the world. 50% of Africans are under the age of 19. So when you start talking about creating jobs and employment, this becomes a very important statistic. In fact, the labor force between 2000 and 2050 uh, will triple 400 million in 2000, it will be 1.2 billion people at work um, by 2050. So this necessarily uh, is, creates a lot of pressure on our mayors that are sitting here because they're going to need to house these people. They're coming from everywhere and uh, settling in cities. What does that mean? Well, let's unpack that and let me introduce you to our guests that are going to help us with this conversation. And don't forget, we want to get your thoughts as well, particularly if you're across the continent, we'd like to hear from you, Lagos, Senegal, um, uh, Kenya. We want to hear what your thoughts are ahead of the Afri Cities Summit taking place in Johannesburg in just 73 days' time. And our guest to take us through that, let me just say a, a very warm welcome to the Secretary General of the United Cities and and local governments of Africa, uh, Mr. Jean-Pierre Elong Mbassi. Thank you very much for joining us, sir, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, next to you is going to be the uh, host mayor of the Afri Cities uh, Summit, Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, Councillor Parks Tau. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much and good morning. And uh, next to you we have the secretary, uh, the chairperson rather, of the South African Local Government Association, helping, I suppose, bring all the local governments, uh, local authorities to this conversation, uh, wearing your hat. But you're also Executive Mayor of Mangaung. Metropolitan Municipality, uh, Councillor Tabo Manyon. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks very much. Peter. All right. Okay. Perhaps if I could start yeah. with you, uh, Mr. Mbasi, because we're talking every cities. That's the big conversation point. Um, wh what, why every cities? What is it about? And why should ordinary citizens like me be interested uh, in what comes out of the Afri City Summit? Uh, Free City is, uh, <coughs> is um, an event, the flagship event of the United Cities and local government of Africa. It came to be because our continent went through a huge change after the liberation of South Africa, the last frontier of colonization. And we realized that 
people found the new era of independence or liberty as um, a change of the ruling of the country, but not the ownership of their own lives. So many people across the continent wanted to be more in responsibilities. And they ask <clears throat> that they participate more in the mastering of their own lives. And they ask for decentralization, which we call the second independence of our uh, continent. We remember this uh, terrible words of uh, a farmer in a remote part of Senegal. The president of Senegal was visiting this part of the country and this farmer came to him and said, Mr. President, tell me when the independence uh, period will end so that we can be free. This was a terrible word. It meant that unless people are capacitated to own their own lives, to take part in the governance of their own life, you cannot say that your country is uh, liberated. And this is why decentralization, going into local, empowering local people becomes so critical. And we thought it was good to celebrate the coming up of local authorities as the expression of the voice of the local people. And we thought it is, was important also to over overcome the divide inherited from colonization between Francophones, Anglophones, Lusophones, Arabophones, and like uh, President Obama Sanjo said, it was, we were launching the uh, UCLGA at Swanee uh, in 2005. We don't know of other phones that, were, that will compete to divide Africa. So we came together in, in, in Abidjan in 1998 to say we stop it we are going to participate at the local level to unite this continent. And we are going to work towards uh, the empowerment of the local people to take control of their life. And this is how Africities was born. All right, we'll unpack that a little bit further, uh, decentralization and uh, how we're going to empower the local people. But let me turn to you, uh, uh, Councillor Tao. <coughs> It's not too long ago, I remember actually that you had mayors from all over the world uh, in Johannesburg. So this is uh, the type of event that uh, uh, the city of Johannesburg is able to, to, to hold. What will we be talking about at AfriCities uh, 2015? What's, what's the main points on the agenda? Well, I think as you indicated in your introductory remarks, the first focus is about linking local government programs to the overall agenda of African governments towards uh, Agenda 2063. 2063, how do we ensure that we're able to build a different Africa where we create prosperity for all, where we improve governance, improve the institutional capacity of our governments, starting from local government level to uh, provincial and national governments? How do we build the mechanisms of um, uh, interface between the different countries and within the different countries. Uh, so at an overarching level, that would be the agenda, but there are specific programs that would we'll be looking at there, about 18 thematic sessions that we're looking at in Africa cities. And this would range from issues such as modern slavery, a matter that relates to problems of people related to human trafficking, abuse of people, exploitation of people, 
to matters related to urbanization and migration. Our cities, particularly African cities, are experiencing high levels of migration and urbanization. An example would be in the city of Johannesburg, we're growing, our population is growing by about 10,000 people every month. This is literally 120,000 people every year that uh, need to be accommodated. They need to form an integral part of our city. And this is happening across the African continent. Our cities are facing increasing pressure from urbanization, but urbanization also comes with the opportunities that people bring to cities, uh, and it is about harnessing those opportunities. We're also talking about the reality that we're a youthful continent, uh, and we need to harness the potential and capabilities of our young people to enable and grow prosperity on the African continent. So uh, it's a whole range of issues. And then, of course, there are issues of financing for development for local authorities. There are issues related to sustainable development, climate change, deforestation. So it's a broad array of issues that we're dealing with that our cities are confronting on the African continent. All right, so we say again, uh, a lot of things to unpack there, and we look forward to that. And some of the initiatives that the city of Johannesburg is taking uh, towards this 2063 agenda, we want to see what practical things uh, that people can relate to. Um, let me turn to you now, um, uh, Councillor Magnoni, and I'm just wondering, you know, when we talk about African cities, often what comes to mind are the big cities. And, you know, it, whether it's Harare, whether it's Nairobi, Lagos, Abuja, and then sometimes Sometimes there's the second and third cities, but the smaller authorities, the smaller municipalities are perhaps where most of the work needs to be done. And the question is, with every cities on the horizon, how do we include all of the local governments and local authorities in a summit like this? Let me first um, start by giving a small example of what an African city is compared to a European city. For instance, in Africa, you have what is called informal hawkers, informal traders and so on, which are seen to be a nuisance one way or another. Mm -hmm. And in Europe, you don't necessarily have those. So when we talk about African cities, we talk about cities that are taking to cognizance these factors and make sure that how do we then accept in terms of our planning to get those who are termed to be informal or who are seen to be a nuisance as part of your local economies, for instance. And the other thing that you mentioned in your opening remarks is about we're a youthful society in Africa and we have a large number of people in major cities. So here in Africa, we have to look into how we make sure that young people become part of our inclusive cities. They don't get alienated. They feel that they belong. And the other issue, of course, is how we ensure that women, who basically are the majority of people in these cities, also take part not only in economic matters, but also on matters of governance. So these are the, people, the issues that we'll be looking into mm. during uh, that time of the African cities. And other matters that my colleagues have already alluded to. And uh, the main thing, of course, is to take that agenda of the AU to build an Africa that we want, not the Africa that was designed by our post-colonial masters. All right. Yeah. I look forward to unpacking this. I'm going to try and take a quick commercial break now. And when we come back, we're going to start exploring these issues and just see how cities can actually contribute to you know, these, twin, these evils of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. What role can cities play? <coughs> what sort of things are they doing practically uh, to change your lives at home? And uh, please don't forget, at Morning Live SABC, that's our Twitter handle, hashtag TNA Biz Brief. Uh, if you've got a question that you'd like to pose to our panelists or a concern that you'd like to raise, we look forward to hearing from you wherever you may be on this continent. We'll see you after this break. <laughs> 